Tom, you've lived this in real time. Explain property in China. Is it the only outlet for the middle class to provide for a future? Well, Tom, the pendulum has swung. When I arrived in 2016 in China, there were banners being put up, Xi Jinping saying, houses are for living in, not for speculating, because the run-up in property prices was red hot. And they were putting in place restrictions to ensure you couldn't buy multiple properties, which historically is something people have done. Why? Precisely because of your point, the majority of household income, or at least savings and wealth, is stored in property because of the difficulties, the risks of investing in the equity markets, and of course, getting that money offshore. It accounts by some measures, the property sector, for about 20% of China's GDP. And the announcements today, broken by Bloomberg News, around additional measures to support this now beleaguered property sector really speak to the urgency. So they're allowing people to buy more properties in certain cities. They're easing some of those restrictions, making it lower in terms of the down payment you have to put, and in terms of the commissioner fees as well that some of these agents charge, they're putting a cap on those. That's another measure that the government has used to try and put a cap right. historically on house prices. Now house prices are down, they continue to be lower. That is a major right. problem for the developers and, the, and that Well, economy. you mentioned the developers. Are they yeah. putting in this legislation, and maybe we'll see if folks Sunday evening, New York time, look for our Asian coverage in the Monday morning of Sunday, 7 p.m. New York time. Tom McKenzie, are they doing this for Evergrande? Is the ARC troubled developer, or are they doing this for a couple out to the west in Chengdu looking at pandas? <laughs> Well, Wanda and Evergrande are two developers that are firmly in focus, clearly, for policymakers in Beijing. So the total, there's, there's potentially debt default or debt that's at risk that is approximate to about 12% of China's GDP. Property debt that is at risk of default, equivalent to about 12% of Chinese GDP, according to some metrics. And those two developers are in the spotlight, certainly. If they can't shift properties, then the payments that they're making, the inability to tap the markets, and they are paying about about 20%, by the way, if they do try and tap the markets, that becomes that much more difficult. If they can't sell properties, they're not buying land. If they're not buying land, then local governments can't fund the support that they need for this economy because local governments in China, Tom, as you know, depend on land sales in order to drive their revenues to be able to fund the infrastructure projects that Beijing wants to see right now.